welcome to Grace Hill Moravian Church for our service for Sunday the 23rd of August. We begin by singing our first hymn, Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. opening prayer. Lord God, we come before you in humble adoration. How blessed are we that the one who holds the keys to the kingdom of heaven is the one who holds the key to our hearts. Thank you God for the privilege of being part of the amazing story of faith that sustained our ancestors. Thank you God that we know our future is safe with you. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Peter's Confession of Christ When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of God is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our church has some wonderful old keys. There are not many of them left. Mine is the minister's key and it opens brother's and door and sister's door. Emma, do you want to take the minister's key and let's see you open brother's door. That's brilliant. You're opening the door, opening a bit wider, so people can come in, come into church, and we'll look forward to welcoming them into church next Sunday. Can you close the door for me, Emma? Thanks. Now, Emma, can you try opening sister's door, please? Are you having a bit of trouble with that? Yeah. Right, put the key in upside down and turn it the wrong way. Why, brilliant. Great. And this door will be open next Sunday as well. So let's go round to Brother's door and see if you can open that door. to church. One of the things I love about our church is that it's so old and has such lovely peculiarities like not all the keys opening all the doors and sometimes the keys having to be in upside down. But the really important thing is that we can open the doors and let people in. And I'm really looking forward to next Sunday when some of you will be able to come back to church to worship here. And you can see that the pews have been marked off so people know where they can and where they can't sit in church. So, <clears throat> some keys open some of the doors here, but next Sunday, all the doors will be open and people will be able to come in through brother's door and leave through sister's door at the end of the service. Jesus talked about keys and said he was going to give Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Peter and all the followers of Jesus are called to open up the kingdom of heaven for all people who believe and trust in Jesus. And the kingdom of heaven isn't just about the future, it's about here and now. So we must all be people who open the door to Jesus in our own lives. And we're to be people who are like keys, who open the doors for other people to know about Jesus. So next week, the doors will be open for church and we will be able to worship together. But the important thing to know is that we are all called to be keys to the kingdom of heaven, whether it's for people who come to the church or people who are staying at home and looking after others. As you come into church through Brother's Door, you'll see a sanitizer and everybody will be expected to clean their hands using the sanitizer before they come in to church. And of course, we'll all be wearing masks. So don't forget to bring your mask to church. We know that not all keys in life are physical. Some of them can be educational. And today we remember our young people as they celebrate the qualifications that they have and they look towards the future. Because their qualifications 
are the keys that can unlock a career path, a university choice, a vocational path in life. So we pray for our young people. They have been through such an upsetting and disturbing time with schools closed and with no exams and then confusion over exam results. So I've asked Sister Roberta Thompson to pray for our young people and for the schools as pupils and students return to school. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray for all the students who have received exam results in recent days. We know that there's been much confusion and distress. So we just bring them and their teachers before you and pray that justice will be done and that they will all get their desired courses. We pray also for all the children going back to school, both primary and secondary, and we pray for their teachers too, and that all will go well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you remember those picture puzzles or illusions that used to be common some years ago? It would be a black and white picture and you'd look at it and it would look like a pair of vases until somebody pointed out that if you looked at it another way it could be faces in profile and often what you saw first in those illusions is what you were told was there and it could take quite a while before you could see anything else in the picture. And that's similar to what happens with the passage from Matthew's Gospel that Roberta read for us. There's at least three ways of looking at that passage. And I think which way you decide on depends very much on where you've come from. You are Peter, a rock in Greek. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now, a common interpretation of this is that Peter is the first leader of the church and that he is the rock and his successors following him in that role. And there's one church and the keys of the kingdom belong to that church. Another position, a bit more nuanced, is that yes, Peter is the rock on which the church is founded, but there was no automatic tactile succession following on from one man to another but the church is still supremely important. A third position is that it's not Peter that is the rock on which the church is founded, but it's Peter's confession that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of the living God. The first creed, if you like, the basis on which the church will be founded. And what people who hold this position would say is that Petros is a Greek word for rock, the name that Peter's given, but the Greek word that's used for ground is Petra. And this distinction sounds great until you think that if Jesus was talking in Greek, then it's still a very clever wordplay. But if Jesus was speaking in Aramaic, then the word for rock and ground are the same, kepa. So much ink and paper has been spread over this passage already. <clears throat> and I don't think there's ever going to be any consensus about what it means when you read the passage. But to get carried away in doctrinal disputes is, I think, to miss the main thrust of the passage. And that is that the church is instituted by Jesus. The church is meant to be. It's not just some man-made institution the church is actually intended to be part of the mission of God. And the tragedy is that so often the church fails to be part of the mission of God to his people. That the church and all churches fail in what we say and what we do and in how we approach people. That churches, denominations and individual congregations <clears throat> so often miss the mark. And time and again, we fail people. But we are meant to be here. We are meant to keep trying. We are meant to keep working. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. One way of looking at that is Archbishop William Temple was reputed to have said that the church is the only society that never loses a member by death. 
And secondly, I think what's great encouragement in that passage is that the church is led by imperfect people. People like Peter. When you think of the things that Peter is recorded as doing and saying in the Gospels, they're so varied. One minute so very perceptive, as in this passage. And just a couple of verses later on, he runs away with himself and tries to tell Jesus what to do. One minute he's so brave, another minute he takes his eyes off Jesus and sinks beneath the wavy sea. I think it's fantastic that Jesus didn't pick a perfect man to be head of the church. He didn't pick even a safe pair of hands, a rabbi or a scholar or an accountant. He picked a fisherman. So there's hope for all of us and all in our churches who bear any form of responsibility, need and crave the support of others, that they will have wisdom to carry out their work. None of us are the Archangel Gabriel. And lastly, and perhaps the most important passage for all of us in this, is what Peter says about Jesus. Jesus says, who do you say I am? And Peter, without hesitation, says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus accepts these titles. He is the Anointed One. He is God's Son. This is Peter's confession. And later on, much later on, after the resurrection, when Thomas encounters Jesus still bearing the marks of the crucifixion, he falls down and worships him and says, My Lord and my God. And that question is still salient. Who do you say I am? Jesus asks that question of each and every one of us. Can we say, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God? Amen.
prayers of intercession, let us pray. Lord, your church is so full of possibility and yet so vulnerable. It is so urgently needed by our world and yet is so often weak. Strengthen each member of the church, bless and encourage those in positions of leadership and increase our commitment to the mission of the church. Your will be done, O Lord. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Lord, the world seems so uncertain, with COVID-19 changing so much around us. Help us to maintain our trust in you and a sense of responsibility to our communities, putting the good of others before our own self-interest. Be with those who work in the care, medical and research sectors. Your will be done, O Lord. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Lord, we welcome into our homes, our streets and schools, and into our communities, where we are blind to your presence. Give us sight to recognise the signs of the kingdom of heaven around about us, in the ordinary occurrences and kindnesses, as well as in the blessings and the miracles. Guide us in the ways of gentleness and peace. Your will be done, O Lord. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Lord, in our constantly changing world, with its fragile ecological balances, help us to cherish your creation, to safeguard it and to seek its renewing. Give us wise heads and a sense of justice that we may support those who work in conservation and climate science. We pray for the work of Christian aid, bringing a Christian perspective to these issues. Your will be done, O Lord. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Lord, all the needs of your children are known to you. We bring to mind in your presence members of our own church community who need your comforting touch, who need healing and help physically, mentally and spiritually. May they find you there beside them in the dark and painful times. Your will be done, O Lord. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Lord, to whom eternity is natural, Help us to realise that time is not the complete story and welcome into your kingdom those who have lived this life in your company and have now passed through death. Comfort those of us here whose hearts are heavy with grieving. Your will be done, O Lord. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Lord, Awaken us to expect you with joy. We give thanks for your tender parenting and your unfailing patience with us. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Amen.